What's going on guys? Today I am going to show you how to draw a clothed figure. So this is actually a follow-up video to last week's video where we constructed um, a figure without clothes on and you can see that video um, on the card up above. But uh, today I thought it would be cool to actually draw a clothed figure and I picked this uh, reference specifically because she's got some pretty heavy clothing on it's kind of hard to see like where her actual form lies underneath those thick clothes so we're going to construct the figure and then clothe her and i'm going to show you my process um, i'm going to use a slightly different drawing technique from last week i wasn't super happy with the way i drew last time so i'm going to try something new and we're going to see how it goes um and then lastly, this uh, this reference is from Facestock on DeviantArt. I'm going to post the uh, link in the description below. But yeah, let's dig into it. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so the first thing is I'm using uh, this brush. It's kind of like just a general chalky brush. I'm sure you have it. I think everybody has this brush by now. We're gonna start just constructing uh, kind of like a stick figure like we did before. We're gonna draw the head, line of action, et cetera. And I'm just gonna talk as I'm drawing. Okay, and and again, I lined up the figure exactly with my, uh, with my image so that I could kind of measure across the screen and make sure I'm hitting my proportions as I go, or at least doing the best I can to hit those proportions. Okay, I'm just gonna be kind of loose because at this point we're more or less worrying about the pose more than anything else. Let me actually change my eraser to a soft eraser. Yeah, that'll look a little bit nicer when I erase. Cool. All right, so let's find her spine. Build in her torso. And something that's interesting to note about this figure as well is that you can see the waistband is curved downwards like this. That's something really important to note. I see a lot of artists either doing kind of like a straight waist or up like this. This is because of how the figure is in perspective, sitting in perspective. We're looking at a pretty like straight on camera view and um, her waist is slightly tilting down. So it's going to do almost like an oval shape like this if we drew it in three dimensions and her torso, you know, is kind of making a cylinder more or less. All right, so this is this is probably the toughest part. I'm trying to actually figure out like where her legs and her, where her, uh, sorry, her quads are underneath this skirt. And I want to measure this out and figure this out before I clothe her because Otherwise, my if I just went into drawing the skirt, it's going to be really hard to kind of find those like dips and edges and figure out like how that knee is pushing the skirt forward. And we're basically just using our, you know, very basic anatomy skills to figure out like where the shoulder is, the bicep, the forearm, etc. I talked about angles last, last week, the angles of the arm. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what is that angle that her arm is making. I want you to also notice the depth of the legs. This back leg is behind the front leg, right? So there's going to be this uh, perspective of her feet. We don't want to put her feet right next to each other, right? If we did that, it would look super flat. So that's another thing to note. And at this point, basically what I'm doing is more or less just a gesture drawing. Just trying to figure out the very basic pose. I mean, we got that in just a couple minutes. It's not the, the prettiest drawing in the world, but you know, it's there. Might as well just kind of, I think her arm is out a little bit too far and the way I can tell is I'm trying to look at how let me make another layer so I can make some marks I'm trying to measure how close her hand is to her hip right there so that's an important little marker for me and 
and I'm doing that with my eye all around the figure. I'm trying to figure out how far or how close things are to each other as I'm going. Also, like I said before, I'm really looking at the um, the angle of things. So this is a very clear, this bracer is a very clear indication of how this uh, cylinder is turned. It's slightly, you know, facing us at the lower edge. That's why this lip is going upward like that. This part of the guard is like overlapping her thigh a little bit. I think, let's see, yeah, looks okay. Her arm might be just slightly long. I might want to pull this up just a little bit and we can use the magic of Photoshop to do that. There we go. I'm even looking at the angle that the sword is facing, right? Like it's, it's slightly tilted down like this. If we made it really flat and we still had a blade that was pointing like that, it would just look off. So just make sure your angles are correct while you're drawing. Try your best to look for that stuff. I think that's the hardest part of drawing and also, you know, what ends up making things look realistic and what kind of separates amateurs from professionals is just being able to notice things like that. and. I think once it's explained to you that you should be looking out for those things, it's a lot easier to start looking out for them. So I'm hoping that you guys can take just little tidbits away from today's lesson, apply it to your own work, and hopefully, you know, come out, you know, a little bit um, more technically proficient. Okay. All right. So we more or less have our pose. Pretty happy with that. I think this knee should, you know, be maybe tilted in slightly maybe make her thigh a little bit longer but whatever it's I think it's okay until we start putting some clothes on okay so I kind of usually get to this point I kind of just block out the figure now I'm gonna loosely start putting the clothes on and um, why don't we why don't we do that in a different layer just so that we can have a sort of reference point all right so let's maybe just slightly lower the opacity of that and I'm gonna start with this overarching cape. And again, I'm I'm really loosely blocking things out. We're gonna tighten stuff up as we as we move along. Again, I'm doing measurements as I draw. I'm trying to see how high up this uh, like uh, animal skin is uh, going up the side of her head. I might just block in some really basic eyes for now, just kind of feel out where the features on her face are so that I have an easier time rendering when I go in for like a clean drawing. <laughs> Okay, we can already start to see the figure take a little bit more shape now that she's got something, some kind of face in there. As I said in the previous lesson as well, faces and hands are the most important things to, to worry about in figure drawing because it's what people look at first. So if you're going to spend some little bit of extra time on anything, let's say, uh, faces and hands okay so I'm not worrying about you know all the little spiky things on the fleece right now I'm just worrying about these big overall shapes and I said this last time as well but I'll say this again too um, these construction phases are really really important it's important especially when you're learning to find your way around the figure and and see the big shapes first before you start going in and detailing. It's really hard when you're not a master yet at proportion and you know uh, materials and stuff like that to go in and just like do a clean line drawing of all of this stuff. So, you know, I've been doing this for some time and I still do construction drawings. 
before I dive into something a little bit more rendered. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out her cape. I, I kind of, I, I imagine for this picture, they probably put some sort of like rod in the back of the cape to make it look like it was floating backwards. It doesn't look supernatural to me, so I'm going to just, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a billow. Also kind of confused that what's, maybe she's holding it back here. We can't really see that. So we might just want to imply that she's kind of, grabbing her cape back there and it's all like scrunched up okay so let's do a little fabric lesson as well so fabric is obviously always weighted down by gravity right that's the very first thing you want to think about so when you're drawing fabric and you're drawing you know from reference or even imagination always just think about the fact that gravity is pushing the fabric down now the thicker the fabric, the less little tiny folds and creases are going to happen. We can see that this cape is really, really thick, right? So in here, we've got these really big, big folds. Even, I mean, even her uh, tunic is, is probably a thicker material. So it's not like her skirt is, you know, folding up into these little tiny folds like this. We've got these big folds. And... Um, Here's something to note as well. The fabric is going to lay on the form. So her knee, or her, sorry, her, her thigh is underneath kind of doing something like this, right? So we can literally see based on this lighting that the fabric is slightly laying on that leg. Um, this leg back here is so far back i don't really think it's pushing on the skirt much much at all so the skirt is sort of just laying flat like this at this point um so we can also see how gravity affects some of the folds here so again the the um the belt is kind of like cinching the fabric it's like tightening the fabric here and there's excess fabric in this area right but what's happening is all the fabric is trying to lay down like it's trying to be pushed down essentially by that gravity and it's creating this fold going like this fabric is one of those things where once you practice it enough times it's kind of it, it, it kind of gets easier to just um you know pull a lot of this from memory into your imaginative work and kind of just more or less make it up while still making it look somewhat realistic. So I'd really encourage you to do studies um, so that you can have that visual library in your head while you're doing your imaginative work. All right, let's get back to the drawing. I'm gonna lower the opacity of this even more. Okay, yeah, that's much better. All right, I'm just kind of hinting at some of these folds right now. Again, still just trying to figure out my, find my way around the figure. Having this underdrawing is just so helpful because if I see things that are just slightly off as I'm you know, going more and more detailed, it's it's much easier for me to just really quickly fix them and get them correct because the major forms are already in their proper places. So the other um, beneficial thing about doing these clothing studies as well is you'll start to learn how clothing is put together. So if you're you know trying to become a concept artist especially, this is a really, really important thing to, to understand. Um, again, it's, it's about building that visual library and getting to the point where you can just kind of pull references from your head um, and add on to references that you're pulling from the internet. Because you'll know how, you know, different kinds of belts are put together or different kinds of, you know, tunics and capes and clasps and buckles and all that kind of stuff. 
is a little bit tricky because it's almost like her leg is foreshortened because it's coming at us at a pretty drastic angle. So I don't want to overdo how large it is, but I also don't want to make it look like it's not foreshortened at all. And then I really need to make sure that this leg in the background looks like it's in the correct perspective as well. Okay, so the bottom of her foot is like a little bit higher up than her ankle. So that's kind of the measurement I am looking at. I should also be measuring across the screen. I think this foot could be a little bit longer. I'm not worrying about all these little folds right now. I'm just going to kind of hint at the fact that the fabric is pushed down. There's that excess fabric. So it's wanting to kind of crease up like we were talking about before, kind of taking a step back, so to speak, look at my overall figure and make sure that she, you know, is feeling like she's actually standing in space. There's weight to her. So this to me now looks like a pretty solid base to actually start drawing over and you know, detailing out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lower the opacity of this and I'm going to go in and do a clean drawing. I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit so I can get a little bit more detail. And we discussed this last time as well, but I'm going to reiterate this. I mean, this, this figure is pretty uh, well lit all around. But you want to tend to have thinner lines on lit planes and thicker lines on shadow planes. It just kind of reinforces the light versus shadow edges. So like the left side of the face right here is lit. So I'm going to have that be a little bit of a thinner line. And then the right side is, you know, pushed up next to shadow. So I'm going to make that thicker. So I briefly talked about um, using a little bit different of a technique this time. What I'm trying to do with my brush this time is use some thicker and lighter strokes to indicate uh, shadow areas um, so that I don't, I don't need to rely on that like little those little hatch lines. So I'm going to try it and we're going to see how it goes. This just feels a little bit more natural to me as a painter. So. Let's see. It's almost like I'm painting slash drawing at the same time. Don't forget to save. I guess the closest technique with traditional materials um, to what I'm doing would be rendering with charcoal because with charcoal, you can kind of use the flat edge to make some broader, smoother strokes. The other thing I'm trying to focus on with this piece is making sure I'm committing to my line work as well. And I think a little bit of a thicker brush is helping with that. When I was using the thin brush last time, I felt myself kind of going um, over my lines a lot and it was, uh, it ended up making my marks really scratchy. For So for those of you who feel like they make a lot of scratchy marks, maybe try doing something more like this and it'll help you. Um, generate a stroke that's a little bit smoother and flowier. When focusing on materials as well, think about the texture of the material. So if something is soft, like the fur, paint it soft. If something is hard, like the buckles, draw harder edges on the sides of the buckles to indicate that it's a harder material.
I think there's also a tendency to try to draw in every single little crease and fold in fabric. And I'd recommend only, um, only actually making line work for the thickest or deepest folds. Um, that way you're not muddying up the contour of your figure by having like all this, you know, extra detail that isn't really necessary to understanding the figure. Um, if you were going to really go in and make this like hyper realistic and hatch every little thing, sure. But if you're doing more of a general uh, outline contour kind of drawing, then it's almost like less is more because we can infer all of these folds by um, how thick the folds are and how thick you're trying to render the material. All right, this looks pretty nice. I might just add a little bit of uh, shading to kind of clean this up and then I think uh, we can call this finished. All right, guys, I think that about wraps it up. Um, I hope you learned something from this. I hope you could take something away from this. If you have any questions about my process or anything, be sure to uh, write a comment uh, down below or hit me up in our Discord. Um, the link to that is also in the description below. I wanna mention as well that I do have one-on-one -on -one mentorships. There's a link down to that also in the description below. You guys can check that out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, let me know if there's something new you want to see, anything else you'd like to learn from me. I'm happy to hear, and um, I'd be down to do more tutorials like this. So yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, keep on crushing it. Keep on drawing, guys. Yeah.